one. All right, so you think you understand heat detectors? Um, think your team knows how to test them correctly? Uh, let's find out. That's what we're going to talk about in this video today. Um, so a little bit of compliance information. So Joint Commission Regulated Facilities, EC235, EP3, still in that series. Um, this may be our last one for our initiating devices. Uh, we'll see DNV, GL, PE2, uh, SR10. Um, so before we get into it, we're going to go kind of the structure of this video, we're going to talk about when can you use heat detectors, why do we use heat detectors, uh, the different types of heat detectors, and then how to functionally test those heat detectors. So breaking it up uh, into those different categories. So why heat detectors? When, when do we use heat detectors? Well, code NFPA 101, the 2012 edition, because that's CMS adopted, um, section 961812, uh, tells us that we can use heat detectors when the ambient conditions for smoke detectors don't, um, when it's not good, not good to have a smoke detector due to dust, um, due to uh, humidity. So we can use heat detectors in those situations. Where in a hospital are you going to find those? Primarily central energy plant, elevators. Um, it's actually required in elevators if you have a, a sprinkler head, uh, mechanical rooms, storage rooms, anywhere that's really dusty uh, that can cause a lot of false alarms. So there are many different types of heat detectors. Um, we've talked in all of our videos about addressable versus non-addressable heat detectors. Addressable detectors, we know exactly where the device is, what alarm is going off, what if it's in trouble, um, so we know, we know where it's at. Non-addressable is just hey, there is an alarm condition in this area, this zone, this floor, this smoke compartment. Um, so not able to, to get to it as quickly. We have electronic, mechanical, and pneumatic types of heat detectors. Pneumatic, you're, I, I really don't think you're gonna find one in a hospital. Some might have it. If you do, post a picture of it below. That only, pneumatic really only ties to, to line type. Um, electronic heat detectors are where it's, it has a sensor, a temp sensor built into it, some sort of computer board, it triggers a signal um, whenever that temp sensor reaches a certain uh, threshold, whatever, whether it's rate of rise or, or fixed temp, which we'll talk about. Um, mechanical is where there's actually mechanical functions. So this, this detector actually from a, a um, rate of rise perspective is a mechanical uh, and the fixed temp. So it actually has um, contacts that activate based on temperature conditions. That sends an electrical signal to the panel triggering an alarm. Um, and then again, like I said, pneumatic is for line type. We'll, we'll talk real quickly line type. There's two different kinds. There's, there's cords um, that actually can sense line, that, that can sense the temperature. And then there's pneumatic tubes where the pressure differential inside those pneumatic tubes changes and it triggers an alarm. Primarily used in industrial settings. So what we see most of the time in healthcare is spot type detectors. All of these are different spot type detectors um, that, that you'll find. Restorable and non-restorable. So a restorable detector simply means that when you test that detector or when that detector goes into an alarm, uh, once it goes into an alarm, uh, and that heat is removed, it will reset uh, back to its normal condition. You still have to reset the panel to get rid of the alarm, alarm condition, but the detector itself is resettable. Uh, Non-restorable non is where it's a one-time use. When it goes off, you throw it away and you replace it, um, much like a sprinkler head. Um, so kind of think of a non-restorable heat detector like a sprinkler head. Uh, and then there's several different types of detectors from how they activate. Rate of rise, which we mentioned, fixed temperature, and rate compensating. You're not gonna find as many rate compensating, but we'll still talk about them. You can also have combination rate of rise, fixed temperature, which we do have an example of and we'll go through. Um, so rate of rise simply means the most common is, is that it's gonna raise the temperature when the, when the ambient temperature raises a certain amount in a given set period of time, it's gonna trigger an alarm. The most common that you're gonna find is 15 degrees in one minute. So if the temperature grows up 15 degrees within one minute, it triggers an alarm. Fixed temperature, um, not as, not, it's, it's a set temperature, typically 135. Uh, if you're in central plants, you may have a 200 degree fixed temp head, but it is just a set temperature. Um, and 
it doesn't go off as frequently as a rate of rise because you know we have thermal lag which prevents it from going off until the ambient conditions around it are truly that temperature. And then rate compensating is primarily like a good, we actually have a drawing over here. We don't have a picture of or we don't have actually one, but we are we have one in, in use on one of our floors, so we'll get a picture. But if you have a probe, a temp probe sticking out of your ceiling that looks like this, that's probably a rate compensating type detector. Um, and how those work is that they are the the tube is actually airtight. Uh, and you can see here I drew do it drew an expanded view, but this airtight tube actually has a high expanding uh, shell around it. And the contacts inside of it, the metal that's inside of it, are low expansion. What this does is it prevents um, false alarms that may occur with rate of rise type detectors when you have quick fluctuations in temperature changes. Um, so maybe around like uh, your boilers, uh, when you accidentally have steam releases or something like that, and you've got a quick change, a rate of rise would go off. This actually prevents those from going off because you have a high expansion and a low expansion type. You're primarily going to see these with clean agent systems um, and uh, pre-action systems, pre-action sprinkler systems. Those are the two, two areas you might see them in your hospital. We do have some um, for uh, a pre-action system on one of our floors. Um, okay, so now getting to the actual testing requirements. Um, NFPA 72-2010, which is what's referenced from 2012 edition of 101, requires a semi-annual inspection of the uh, heat detectors. So, and we'll take pictures of these codes and post them below. Why do we do a semi-annual inspection? <laughs> Drew found a great, few great examples of why. So this one's actually covered with fireproofing. You can tell it wasn't removed and we did uh, spray back fireproofing, um, completely rendered it useless. Uh, this one is broken. It may still function, uh, but it is broken and oh, it's broken some more. So that's why we do a semi-annual visual inspection. Um, and then for functional tests, just like smoke detectors, uh, just like duct detectors, we have to do a functional test. So. Uh, most manufacturers for your, your resettable, your restorable type devices tell you, if you look at their, say, use a hair dryer, use um, some sort of uh, method to, to test. Uh, some actually will say you can put it in water and whatever. Don't. There's way easier ways to do it. So there are several different uh, testing type devices uh, that provide heat. We'll test it, and then when it's removed, you can reset the device. Um, so what's more, those, those we don't really see problems with. Where we see problems are with our non-restorable spot type detectors. This is actually both. This is a rate of rise restorable and a fixed temp non-restorable. So the rate of rise uh, in this is pressure builds up inside of this air chamber and it vents out of the top. When pressure builds up faster than it can vent out, it triggers an alarm. It also has a fixed temperature. When it hits a certain temperature, then um, it triggers the alarm as well. What, but that is a thermal link. So there's a spring inside of here, it melts it, and that spring releases and activates. Um, so that one can't be replaced. So you gotta throw it away, put it in there. What's most common is that these aren't tested. If you check your reports and you have these, a lot of times it will say, unable to test non-restorable device. That is false, that is absolutely false. It actually, if you go to, to the actual device manufacturer and look, most of the time what you have to do is you have to check and see uh, what the resistance across it is. One more thing about these. Um, fixed temp detectors, after 15 years after being uh, put in service, you have to send them to a lab to be tested. If they fail, you have to test more to see if it's localized or global. And if you don't replace them, you have to retest every five years. Last and most important, Drew, say hi. Hello. Thanks, everyone. Till next time, happy learning.